Hi there and welcome back to the channel, my wonderful viewers, subscribers and members. Your support as ever is appreciated. If it's your first time on the channel, welcome and do hit that subscribe button and the notifications bell if you like what you see and how would you know that because you haven't watched yet but I'll remind you at the end of the video. Right, on to today's video. We're going to talk all about Microsoft Defender for Identity. I've covered this on the channel before and I will put a link to the previous content that we recorded for Defender for Identity in the description of the video but I wanted to see what's new. It was a request that I had. It was a poll that I had from my uh, senior members WhatsApp group which you can now join if you're a senior member. Uh, hit me up on LinkedIn if you want to join, if you're not already a member. And if you want to join then and you're already a member, consider upgrading to senior member or, or, or join if you're not a member. So I digress. Defender for Identity. Let's take a look at uh, and a reminder what it is, what it's all about, and a look at some of the new features and what it means for your Microsoft 365 and hybrid uh, environments. Let's check it out. So let's start with Copilot, my favorite way to find out about things at the moment. So tell me, Copilot, what's new in Microsoft Defender for identity? Let's see what it comes up with. So we've got three specific things that it's telling us about here. Number one, identity security posture assessments or ISPMs. These new assessments help monitor misconfigurations and reduce risks in on-premises infrastructure. They include recommendations for securing Active Directory and Group Policy objects. Number two, Microsoft EntraConnect sensor. A new sensor for Microsoft EntraConnect servers has been added enhancing coverage in hybrid identity environments. This includes new hybrid security detections and identity posture recommendations. And finally, number three, updated recommendations. Existing recommendations such as modifying insecure Kerberos delegations have been updated to include more detailed indications. So what we can do if we click on the little numbers next to each one is we can open in a new tab, hopefully, what's what's new, and it'll take us right there and give us a bit more detail about what is going on. And we can get this month by month, which is really, really good. So MDI is expanding coverage with 10 new identity posture recommendations. This is a preview feature. And these new assessments can help clients monitor misconfiguration by watching for weak spots and reduce the risk of potential attack on on-premises infrastructure. The new identity recommendations as part of Microsoft Secure Score, this is important to note, are new security posture reports related to active directory infrastructure and group policy objects. And that makes sense if you think about it because Defender for Identity is really all about putting sensors on your on-premises assets, extending that uh, cloud protection to your on-premises assets if you have hybrid identities in place. So we've got lots of uh, further information here about what that's going to do for you. So that's wonderful. If we go back, we can see uh, a bit few months prior, we've got August 2024, details about what the new Microsoft Entry Connect sensor is going to do. And as part of Microsoft's ongoing effort, to enhance MDI coverage in those hybrid identity environments. They've introduced a new sensor for EntraConnect servers, and they've released new hybrid security detections and new identity posture recommendations specifically for EntraConnect to help you stay protected and mitigate potential risks. So what have we got? We've got things like rotate password for EntraConnect account. We've got remove unnecessary replication permissions. We've got change password for Entra seamless SSO account configuration all very, very sensible stuff. So I think if I go back to Copilot, number one covered those top two, those, uh, and number one covered those updated recommendations as well. So it's going to take us to that same uh, learn.microsoft.com article for all. But there's no better way to see Microsoft Defender for identity than under the hood itself in the actual portal. 
Now, I have both the security portal, as I uh, correction, the entry portal uh, open, and the security portal open, as I call it, uh, or the defender portal at security.microsoft.com. I also happen to have purview open because I've always got purview open because I'm a purview guy. But let's start with the Entra Admin Center, entra.microsoft.com. As ever, you're going to be uh, requiring a administrative account to get here and get the necessary permissions to view the identity configurations within Entra. So here we have identity expanded. We can get a quick overview of what is included in here. And what we want to be looking at is uh, recommendations. So we can go into recommendations and we can see things like our identity secure score, and we can view our Microsoft secure score from a link here as well, which will take us to the security portal. So we've got 14 recommendations here, and we can filter them as we need to, so we can protect the tenant with inside a risk condition in conditional access, and it tells you here the required licenses to do this, and it tells you the release type for this as well, which is absolutely fantastic. Now these are, uh, broadly speaking, what I'm seeing here are recommendations relating to uh, cloud. Ah, here we go, enable password hash sync if hybrid. So there are some hybrid conditions in there. So um, look out for exactly what these recommendations are going to relate to and also look at the priority for them as well. So if you've got some high ones in there, do pay particular attention to those and act upon them. So for example, protect all users with a user risk policy. If we go into this, we can see exactly uh, the number of points that this is going to contribute to your score, the status of it, the description, it's telling me here that I've got 22 users that don't have a user risk policy enabled. Tells you the value of doing that and the action plan you need to implement it. What is the user impact? The policy triggers access to the account will either be blocked or the user will be required to use MFA and change their password. So really cool stuff. So impacted resources, nice and simple. So there we go. Let's go back to... This is what I really hate. You can never just go back. Let's just... Go back to uh, the overview page there to, to get and get back to our recommendations. So before I move on to the security portal and we can have a look at how that plays into Defender for Identity, let's just have a quick sort of reminder of what is included in Defender for Identity. So we can see all of our users in here, all users, all deleted users and the user settings. So if we go there, we can just get access to... Uh, features that uh, relate to those users. So I've got del deleted users I've got there. I've got users. I can see the audit logs. I can see the user settings and so on and so forth. I can also view my group statistics. So I can get statistics on the groups, the total groups, M365 groups, security groups, dynamic groups, cloud groups, and premises groups. And I can go to those group settings as well. I can view devices in here that relate to identity uh, and get information on those. I can see my stale devices, my non-compliant devices, my unmanaged devices, and I can see my uh, BitLocker keys as well. So just making sure I'm not straying beyond the scope of identity. Uh, no, I'm still within there. So the next thing, it's always quite difficult to see this. So what's after identity? It's protection. So I need to go down to protection for the next category, which is there. So amazing. So we can see applications from here. We can see protection, which takes us into identity protection protection, conditional access, authentication methods, and so on and so forth. We can see identity governance, uh, which is things like entitlement management, access reviews, PIM, et cetera, et cetera. And what we can also see is, this is what I want to look at, hybrid management and EntraConnect. Now, we, we talked about EntraConnect and the, the new sensor um, configurations that are available for it. Just remind myself what that said, actually. Uh, a new sensor for Connect servers has been added, enhancing coverage in those hybrid environments. So um, on the Get Started page, it tells you the differences between Cloud Sync and uh, Connect Sync, what is right for you. Now, I have Connect Sync set up in my environment. It's going to tell me that action is required. 
a service change is coming to IntraConnect Sync update to the latest version. <laughs> I've not updated my intro for a very long time. In fact, being completely honest with you here, I don't even have access to the server that Entra was, or as it was at the time, Azure AD Connect was set up on. So you can see that my last sync was, that's been very kind, more than one day ago. It's probably well over three or four years ago, I'm going to, going to guess. But from here, you can get uh, access to all sorts of good stuff in terms of how you're configured for Entra, um, your on-premises applications, and you can get to your health and analytics for Microsoft Entra Connect Health. And this is where you're going to be able to, to see, I'm presuming, the information coming from those enhanced sensors. Now, I've definitely got some sync errors. Um, that's going to be a given because I, um, I haven't synced in a very, very long time. In fact, did I turn... Dersync, as it was known back in the day, off. I'm uh, I'm going from memory here, but a quick sort of uh, recap there of what this is all about in terms of identity in the Entra portal. But uh, I digress. Let's just get back to the actual subject of Defender for Identity, and there are relevant. Um, things to look at in the security portal as well. And if we go into exposure management and into our secure score, and what we can do within here in relation to Defender for Identity is we can look at recommended actions. And let's collapse that so we get more screen space. And we've seen the secure score before, of course, but we can filter this by category, and products, so we've got Defender for Office there, we've got Enter ID, so if we filter by category, uh, going up there, we can go by identity, so, uh, and we can make other choices there if we want to filter it even more, and we can go Defender for identity. So let's apply that and see what we've got. And we've got absolutely nothing. So I've got no recommendations for Defender for identity. I'm going to postulate, there's a fancy word, um, or theorize that I'm not getting anything there because my uh, Enter ID Connect is not in a healthy state. It's not really running. But if you've got Enter in a in a proper state, uh, uh, as I unfortunately don't, I'm, I'm guessing you're going to see some, some recommended actions in there. Let's just take that filter off, Defender for Identity. Let's just take that one off. Let's just, just toggle with just identity, see if I get any actual, I mean, I do have some identity recommendations in there, but not specifically for Defender for Identity. But this is where you go. If you want to see those Defender for Identity um, items that you, that you can view from the Secure Score portal, then you're going to see them in here. And that is the point of, of this video to to let you know those new features and where to look at them. Uh, one of these days, I'm, I'm really gonna have to get myself a bit more organized and uh, update my hybrid environment and, and, and show you some actual uh, things in those, in those uh, categories, in those filters. Uh, those of you who's watched other videos know that I'm also stalling on calling Microsoft to get my, my Defender uh, for Endpoint uh correctly working for my mac as well so i've i've been lazy if i've been honest but i'm hoping nonetheless that you found this video a bit useful in terms of where to find defender for identity what it does in terms of protecting your on-premises assets like your um your intro id connect servers your um your domain controllers and, and all that good stuff i've done a video on this before i'll try and uh, I won't try, I will link to that video because I have done that um, in an earlier video series when I first started the channel, Defender for Identity was part of the MS-102 exam series. I'm pretty sure it was anywhere. Um, so I'll link to that. Right, well, let's wind up there and get some closing thoughts. There we go. Um, I think that Defender for Identity is a very, very underused, uh, little known about undiscovered gem within the Microsoft 365 suite of products. So if you've got a hybrid environment and if you've got the licensing to use it, why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you put those sensors on, take advantage of all the IntraConnect good stuff that's there 
and use it to your advantage. It, it really is very, very good. Um, I, um, I'll, I'll apologize that my, my own hybrid environment is, is not up to, to par. It's, it's not been for a long time and, uh, I'll try and make a New Year's resolution to, to get it up and running again and uh, give you more effective demos because I, I feel like I let you down a little bit there in that video by not having a good hybrid environment up and running to, to, to see if we would get some actual Defender for Identity uh, um, listings in, in those recommendations for, for the assessments. But hopefully it's given you an idea of what you, you can expect if you're actually going to deploy that yourself um, or if you're already using it, some of the new features that you, you can go looking for and be aware of and configure and all that good stuff. So let's wind things up. Thanks as ever for your support. Thanks to my members. Uh, your support is phenomenal and massively appreciated. I think I've got about 95 members now, which is insane. I'd love to get to 100. That'd be an amazing Christmas present. So do con consider hitting the join button. Um, the 99 pence junior member option will get you access to all of the members only videos, which um, come out roughly every couple of weeks. I, I try and do these things weekly, but I, uh, at the very least should be every couple of weeks at the moment with the way my day job is and, uh, and coming up to Christmas. But, um, but yeah, and do hit that subscribe button if you've not already done so um if you are new to the channel as i said at the start of the video i uh, hope you liked it uh, check out some of my other content if you like what you see if you want to stick around hit that subscribe button hit that notifications bell so you never miss a video watch out for my shorts as well which i do occasionally i make short clips of these longer form videos to entice you in basically and uh, get you into long form videos so um there you go and um have i done all my housekeeping like share subscribe that's about it it's christmas coming up it's uh saturday 14th of december as i film this and i've got one more week to work in my crazy busy day job at insight and i am so looking forward to the christmas holidays you have no idea how ready i am to switch off so I know content's been a bit more sporadic lately. I've been less than regular with the videos, which are normally weekly. It's been more fortnightly at best lately. So, and it's probably not gonna improve that much between now and, and the new year, because I, I do plan to switch off a little bit. Between Christmas and New Year, I do tend to get a little bit bored and look for things to do. So I, I might get around to filming some content. And as ever, let me know um in the comments if you've got a particular video that you'd like me to cover a particular subject uh within microsoft 365 within azure i might try and do a bit more azure content in the next year um who knows because i i don't know an awful lot about the azure side maybe i could learn as i go and share the journey um let me know what you think right i'm rambling i know that so we'll wind it up thank you all uh stay safe travel well and uh, have a wonderful Christmas and New Year if you celebrate. If you don't, have a wonderful time anyway, and I will see you down the road. Bye for now.